Our guest is Sheriff Nate Harmon. He is uh, currently in the Capitol. Uh, Nate, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Uh, good morning, Rob, uh, Bill, Maria. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning. What uh, what takes you to the state capitol today, sir? Well, uh, the uh, West Virginia State Police, for the first time, have uh, partnered with the Federal Bureau of Investigations and provided a summit, uh, whereas they're showcasing all their information platforms like the West Virginia Intelligence Exchange System, uh, National Incident Criminal Background Check uh, Systems, uh, Fusion Center, and some other compliments in terms of uh, traffic enforcement and vendors and stuff like that are down here. But uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's one of those things you look at the agenda and it's like, well, okay, this is going to be a lot of uh, people going to be talking and stuff. But I found, you know, when I come down here, it's a very interesting um, where we were when I was in the state police in 2000 to where we are at now. And the uh, technologies that are out there that help make our job a lot more efficient. And uh, that's what I'm seeing here at this summit. And it's very interesting. Uh, and at the very least, a, a reminder of what resources we got out there as law enforcement to help do our jobs. I saw in the annual report from the county that they had budgeted for 67 sheriff's department positions. Nate, are all of those currently filled or are you in the process of trying to? Uh, actually, that should say 68. There was, they actually were counting my chief as a position. I think we figured that out, that that's, that should be, uh, accounted for that. But, uh, we are testing. We recently tested, um, we had one that actually made it all the way through. We have, uh, so four other positions technically, um, for me to be full staff would be two with the one that was in contingency and the one that they were counting my chief for that's two actual ones so i'm down for four folks right now in total uh, sheriff uh several years ago uh the question of uh proper staffing has been around for many many years if memory serves randy smith used to say he needed around 11 uh, uh 100 deputies or close to it to do his job adequately uh based upon what the nation some of the nationwide figures were uh your numbers are substantially less than that uh do you feel that the numbers that you're striving for would be sufficient to do your job uh the the our wish list of 100, we should be at 111, technically, where, where we should be right now. Um, we are on a at least a uh, consistent and uh, at least workable track where uh, we try to get to the one versus a thousand type of ratio. That's more for metropolitan areas than it is so much for rural county areas, but that is a an achievable goal. Um, I believe there we have been in discussions about what we look like three or four years down the road. Uh, we're looking at 145, 144. If certain things uh, legislatively get passed, where we get additional funding, but um, we aren't where we, I would like to be currently. Uh, we should be. My goal was to have around 73 at this point somewhere between 73 and 85 at this, uh, you know, by the end of my first four years, uh, we're not there yet. And I don't see them giving me 15 deputies, uh, in a year's time, but, uh, we're, we're, and that's what makes this here, this, the summit actually to tie that in, um, you know, how can I make that deputy more efficient in doing their job, uh, not only efficiently, but quickly because they got to move to the next thing or the next investigation and be able to try to clear these successfully uh, quickly. And so um, not where we want to be or not where I'd like to be. Uh, we're definitely having some serious discussions about where, where that needs to be, though. Uh, Nate, going back to the uh, summit, and I do not know how tech-savvy you are, uh, but I would imagine the summit's going to be very, very heavy on technology. Uh, do you, are you there by yourself, or are you taking one of your uh, uh, technicians, uh, te someone that's uh, much more tech-savvy than a normal person would be, uh, with you, or are you there by yourself? I'm, I'm here by myself. Um, some of these platforms are new. Most are, have been in existence, but have 
done a lot of improvements and established a lot of MAU, MOUs with other uh, organizations and to and or third party vendors to be be able to make sure that uh, they are operating more efficiently with today's time. So I'm here by myself. Uh, Sheriff Ford and his chief is down here. Um, chief is up in uh, Berkeley County. We don't always, uh, you, you know, it's, uh, we, we, we've agreed that when one's away, the other has to be there kind of thing. Um, but um, we sharing this information, being able to put it on a cheat sheet for our guys was what the goal is. So, so Nate, uh, talk a little bit about, um, you're talking about the staffing issue and what your goal would be. Um, I know there's been movement over the past couple years of raising um, starting salaries. What is a, what is a deputy for the sheriff's department start at and and where can he or she move to um, after so many years? Well, uh, one of the one of the proud moments I have is coming to organization uh, events like this and meeting my fellow uh, chiefs or sheriffs, and, and the first things out of their mouth is like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you guys are starting out at this much! Oh, how did you even get it like that?" So those are, you know, I don't brag about it, but I, I'm very proud of where we're at and what we've been able to do with the commission uh, and our Berkeley County Civil Service, and where we've gotten our uh, our starting salaries for folks that are either pre-certified or new folks coming in. If you're a new person coming in. You can make upwards of uh, you know fifty three thousand dollars. Just kind of give it an even uh, a great number. It's uh, it ends up being fifty two, almost fifty three. But uh, starting out, and if you're bringing some years of service, like up to five years of service, then before we could we have to start you off even as a pre certified person. Um, you know, just like you were a new person off the street, you'd start you know at fifty two. Well, depending on the experience that you bring us, uh, we can we can start you off at nearly sixty three thousand um, dollars. And this was a a, a very collaborative uh, uh, thing that, that us and the commission decided upon. Uh, they agreed with it, and the civil service agreed with it. Uh, you know, we're, our application pool isn't uh, you know the greatest or what it used to be. Uh, you have to be creative on that part. Uh, you know, a lot of people aren't very good test takers and they sometimes they don't prepare for the, the physical agility test and you know we get 25 applicants 12 show up uh eight pass the the uh physical agility test and eight fail the written test and that's happened to us actually twice um so it's it's difficult but when we so so what's the what what's a, a another way we can get the you know these holes filled and our manpower up and that's when we decided upon pre-certified officers. Let's let's give them their credit, their due uh, pay for the investment that you're getting. You're getting potentially instructor certified officers. You're getting officers already in the academy versus the new person. New person's got to go through the academy and up to 15, 16 weeks of the academy. Then they got to go to three month field training uh, 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 probation period. Um, and then uh, they're observed for another three months, and then they're on the, the road by themselves. Whereas a pre-certified guy, you, it's, I've never seen one go past 30, 30 days, and they're on the road by themselves because they just simply need to learn it, uh, learn the civil processes that the sheriff's office does. It's, it seems to be the biggest hurdle, but um, that's what they start off at. They could start off upwards of you know sixty three thousand dollars if you're pre-certified, but fifty two if if you're uh, not so nate my next question admittedly is snarky but <laughs> <laughs> never he, he journal, never. he's journal looking at me when he says that nate <laughs> so my, my 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 question is as as you mentioned other areas of the state have said to you wow how can you start deputies off with that much of a salary so i'm guessing then that there has been a flood of applications from deputies uh in the southern end of the state who aren't making as much money who are trying to fill these jobs in Berkeley County that you have open? Because I've been led to believe if we raise teacher pay in the Eastern Panhandle, all the teachers from the other end of the state are moving here to take these higher salaries. So I'm guessing that's happened with the sheriff's pay too, right? That is indeed snarky. I, I, I couldn't imagine it being less snarky. Uh, the, uh, the, so we've gotten people 
from Kanawha County. We've gotten people from other place, other agencies across the state. We got people from Oregon Town PD. Uh, we've gotten uh, um, we've gotten even out of state officers, folks from uh, Prince George's County has even sought interest in it. And you know, when you ask these folks, they just they just like what we're doing here. And most, if not, I would say ninety percent of these folks. The word money doesn't come out of their mouth. Obviously, we want to compensate them for the risk that they take, but you'll find a lot of these deputies, even places like Calhoun County, where I think there's only like a sheriff and a chief, uh, if that, but there's some places only have 10 uh, or 15, and and you'll find a lot has to do with just wanting to be home in an area or close by an area that they grew up in. Uh, the money doesn't matter. You kind of, kind of, to do this job, especially nowadays, you just kind of, you got to be born into it. You got to want to do it and with such a passion that, you know, as long as you're fairly compensated for, for whatever definition that is to them, um, the, the money really is uh, kind of like the third factor in things, hey. uh, is what I've come to find out. Hold on a second there, Bill. I, I don't want to. I'm not cover this before we do run out of time. Uh, the sheriff department's involvement in the incident yesterday at North Middle, Nate, and, and how um, much were you kept aware of the situation? Um, I, I will say the friendships, the relationships, the collaboration between us and the schools. I would say that it was a work in progress in 2021, 2022. I, where we are at now in terms of the sharing of information, notifications, and how that, what that looks like and how it should be is, is, uh, I couldn't be prouder of where we're at because we are, we are kept abreast of things immediately when there, you know, there's a handful of tier people that are notified right off the bat on any potential threats made. And I was kept abreast on an incident in the County at a school, um, um, Spring Mills, I believe, area. And, uh, you know, there's going to be juvenile petitions filed and, um, you know, a process is going through uh, with with that. It's a cleaner process because we're communicating better with each other. Uh, the SROs are, are working in, in tandem with uh, the task force office, our ACE team. They all come in together. There's a protocol that we put in place uh, early last year, uh, whenever we receive any kind of school threats, uh, whereas you'll see an increase in law enforcement presence, but at the same time, understand that there's plain clothes officers in the area as well. Um, so, uh, with that said, yesterday's incident was not only did they notify me immediately, but Chief Young did an excellent job of dealing with things and keeping me informed uh, directly on its progression and you know, uh, Chief Gibbons uh, worked uh, in tandem with our office and the task force, and, and I couldn't have been prouder with the collaboration that I was at least seeing from the outside in. Nate, uh, going back to yesterday's incident, and I fully appreciate that each incident could be different. Uh, rarely do you have the same one over again. But yesterday's was someone accessing a student's uh, uh, Instagram account. Uh, with te- and I, I kind of alluded to this with Ron Stevens on earlier today. With our technology today, is it possible that within the school perimeter uh, that there would be uh, incoming or uh, transmission communication could be limited to a pre-approved number in other words could the uh, parents access the students be uh, be upheld uh, kept but any other communication would be blocked um, I do know of technology that does that that blocks uh, the signals but I do. I am unaware of any technology that would do that in the respect of blocking uh, outgoing and not incoming, or vice versa. I'm not aware of that. Uh, I would not be surprised if that does exist. And that's a good question. I'll ask. Uh, I'll ask our folks down here while I'm down here. But um, I think that that would be an excellent technology to utilize, and I'd be 100% supportive of that. 
Uh, yeah, and I could see real advantages, at least in the incident we had yesterday. Going back to the cost, uh, you mentioned the salaries being around fifty-two to 62000 There's associated costs that the county council, county commission, are certainly aware of, such as the uh, uh, the uh, the out the guns the uh, the uniforms the uniform ve- the uh, protective vest the automobiles mm-hmm. the insurance the litany goes on and on. Do you have an estimate of the cost per officer? About seventy five thousand dollars. Seventy five thousand. That's uh, I would have thought it more than that. That's that's good. So, so and, me- and you got to look. That cost is actually reduced when you're when you're talking about pre certified officers because the the training which they bring with them, the, the NRA firearm certifications, the driving instructor, the uh, drug recognition expert, which there are none right now, but I'm just hypothetically, and the training costs from the academy and the fees involved with that. Uh, that that is all negated when you when you talk about pre-cert. So, but approximately seventy five thousand dollars when you yeah. count car equipment. Okay. Good. Okay. So, um, sheriff. Uh, Quick question. One of the words that I've heard you use throughout the discussion is collaboration and communication. Um, it is no um, no secret that other sheriffs who uh, came before you have had perhaps acrimonious, not the best relationship with the county commission, county council. Maybe I should ask former Commissioner Stubblefield about this, but um, <laughs> but talk a little bit about that, because it sounds like um, not that you're necessarily in lockstep always, but that you have a good communication strategy, mm-hmm. that you collaborate very well with the county commission, and that seems to make for um, better relationships. Yeah, I, I think um, just talking about myself personally, what I've what I've promised myself is that I'm not going to make this about myself. It's not going to be personal. Uh, I need to pick my battles. I know I'm not. My expectations is not to be uh, told yes all the time. Expect the no's and don't think things personal. So when I establish when I uh, was this building these relationships, I think we're in an excellent spot now. I mean, they knew a lot more about me and how I uh, handle things and, and they can read me better as I can them. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's been some abrasive times, uh, whether it be behind closed doors or not. And I just can't take those things personal. It's not about me. I got to remind myself constantly that if it, it, is this the battle I need to fight and do I, do I need to die on this hill? And who's it going to affect? And I just, you got to take the personable side stuff out of it. Um, I, I could have been offended many times, uh, but I, I chose not to go down that rabbit hole because at the end of the day, it's about the deputies and I'm temporary. At one point or another, I will leave. And I just want to lay my head down at night saying I did the best I could without making it personable about me. And those deputies, Increase. I increase their chances of survivability in various uh, situations that I believe they'll involve themselves in. Uh, if I've done that, then then I'm I'm happy where I'm at. I'll swallow my pride, if need be, in a, in a handful of situations, uh, whether it be with the commission or the school board or s- school executive staff. Um, and that's how I've approached things, and I think that that's worked well. Yeah. Hey. I- Good, Bill. I was going to say, I think a lot of credit goes to both the sheriff and the county commission, county council, to keep most of these disagreements uh, behind closed doors. Uh, only mm-hmm. 20, 25 years or so ago, it became public, and it was very disruptive uh, uh, and harmful mm-hmm. to both the sheriff's department and the county commission. Sure. I agree. Now, that was when Bill was in office, and he was no, very no, obstinate no, no. as the yeah, president. Yeah. I, I, was, I was not in office at the time. I want to be sure. Of that he he insisted they address him as King Stubblefield, and, and that so, created some and so when they walked by the, the door. Admiral. That's it. That's it. No way. No way. That, uh, take up for me. Take up for me. They're picking on me. Uh, Nate, final question for you in regards to Interstate 81. Is there still active sheriff's department enforcement? And... Uh, uh, I haven't seen the speed limit sign on there, the electronic flashing one, in a little while. 
Well, so um, as promised, uh, it's a double-edged sword with those all-traffic solution devices. We have four of them. Um, and trust me when I say with the air show, the youth fair, and all the other events that uh, we, our office has, the phones have been burned down with requests to have those signs uh, at their disposal. And that's one of the promises I've made to the county is that, you know, with the county commission's investment in some of them and the delegates' investment in the others, uh, they will be used uh, for the community when the community needs them. Trust me when I say we're, we're definitely looking at additional technologies, uh, as I am right now in the summit, about bringing them to Berkeley County, uh, especially in the school zone areas uh, in terms of track and force enforcement. But you will see those machines out there on uh, I-81. Matter of fact, my directive was, hey, I need all these signs there mm-hmm. near these schools because they're a good reminder. And uh, unfortunately, I was told that, well, they're kind of being all consumed for the air show. So. But they're, they're shortly, uh, they're, in short order, they're going to be out there soon enough. But more, more to come on that. Very good. Thank you, Nate. We always appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys very much. I appreciate the time here. Thanks, Sheriff.